Hello and uh, welcome one and all. Today we will continue with the data load tool or DLT library. We will explore the date-based incremental load approach using DLT. Previously you have covered the auto incrementing ID incremental load. This approach reads all data from the source and compares it to the target and only load changes to the final table. This technique is called destination change comparison. It is an improvement on the truncate and load approach. However, we still can improve upon this using the source change detection. In this approach, we detect what rows have changed in the source and only pulled the change rows for the ETL operation. This is an optimal method of moving data between systems. However, this technique has a prerequisite. It requires a date column such as a modified date in the source table that broadcast what rows have changed in the source table. In addition, it requires a trigger on the table. So when an insert or update operation occurs on the table, this trigger updates the modified date value to the current date. The incremental load approach is the act of loading only new or changed data. Okay, with this backdrop, let's go ahead and prepare our source system. So in our source SQL Server, we will create a new table. With the following script, I will create a product table from one of the existing tables. For this demo, we are only selecting 10 rows and we are moving forward the years and the dates. Once the table is created, we can select from it to preview the data. Okay, this looks good. In this table, we have a modified date column that we will use as our cursor column. This will tell us when a row is updated or inserted into this table. In our DLT project, let's go ahead and create a new file called SQL Product Incremental. We import the required libraries in this file. The function for the incremental load is quite similar to the previous session. We'll add in a few additional parameters to this function. We can pass in the table, primary key, and to the SQL table function call, we provide the incremental option and set this to DLT sources incremental. This requires the date column and the initial date value. With these changes, our incremental function is complete. We call this function at the end with the required parameters, table and primary key. Okay, we are ready to test this function now. Let's run the pipeline file. And as expected on the first run, we ran into the replica identity error. We will go ahead and enable the replica identity on the target Postgres table. And once this is enabled, we can go ahead and try rerunning our pipeline again. Our pipeline is running and it completed successfully. We can query the target table in the Postgres to view the data. This should be identical to the source at this moment. Upon success, we can go ahead and test the incremental load option. Back in our source database, we create a trigger on the product table. This runs on insert and update operations. On each insert and our update, we update the modified date column to the current date for our product ID. Just an FYI, this is a costly operation. Therefore, most database admin disable this functionality. Now we'll insert a row in the product table with the following script. A new row has been added. Also, we are going to update a row for the product ID one, and we'll set the color column to black. We can preview the changes in the source with the select statement. Our changes are present. Let's run our pipeline and see the incremental load in action. Our data pipeline completed successfully. Let's go ahead and query the target table to confirm. It all looks good in the target schema. We have a new row added to the table and it also picked up the updated row. You must be thinking it all looks similar to the previous approach. What's the difference? The change becomes apparent once we query the staging table. It is only querying and reading the changed rows. If you recall with the auto incrementing ID, pipeline deduplicates all the rows in the source. Here we only read in the changed rows from the source database. 
Therefore, this is a much more efficient approach to move data between systems, given your system meets the requirements. This is all on incremental data load for now. I hope you enjoyed the session. Like, share, and subscribe. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.